In this video, I'm going to teach you some Jedi concrete design tricks. My name is Tyler Light. I make these videos to teach you the ways of the Force. You've probably been designing simply supported beams now for some time. Maybe you feel confident about them. I hope you do. We're about to move on to the tip top of the mountain, the continuous beams. This can be scary, overwhelming. Look at all the supports. Look at all those beams. What am I going to do? But even things that are challenging, even things that are some of the toughest things in your life, if you know how to handle them, you can make them easy. And this reminds me of Rey. She's in the desert. She's being screamed down by Kylo Ren and his TIE fighter. It looks horrible. It looks overwhelming. Rey is calm. She's running in the opposite direction, building up speed. Then she does this sweet back flip, extends her lightsaber, and slices his wing off. Rey sticks the landing. The vehicle crashes, propelling the cockpit through the desert. Yikes and then it explodes. Ha! Ray, you're awesome. What a sweet move. One of my favorite parts of the movie. We're gonna teach you how to do stuff like that with continuous beams. This is the final step when it comes to beam design, continuous beams. We're gonna take some basic steps up front. We're gonna calculate our design moments and shears. We're gonna find the maximum moment. That is the critical one. The maximum moment and that is the section we're gonna design first. We're gonna find our steel layout to make sure we meet strength, our area minimum, any bar layouts, any other criteria. Then we'll do our critical sections for shear and do typical shear design layout from there. We have two more tricks though. They're gonna make this our lives a lot easier because it might seem like this could just be the beginning. We're talking about a structure that looks something like this. I've shown the moment diagram down here that I found from my favorite structural analysis program. And I have these different sections, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I have the moments at each one of those sections. Those moments are going to be important. We're gonna come back to this, but we're gonna focus on section A. Why? Because it has the highest moment. We're gonna design that first. And then this is what our cross section looks like. And yikes, yikes, yikes. It looks like we have to do this in six spots, but don't worry, sweet trick coming ahead. Now we flip over here and this seems like a typical design moment that we're doing for section A, the one with the highest moment. This is our moment equation. We're gonna assume this is 0.9D. If you've never seen me do this, check out previous trick videos where I talk about this sweet awesomeness. Then I design what my area of steel is. I plug in here and I get 4.42 inches squared. Now in this, I guessed a number eight bar. I guessed, so I calculated what, what my D was. Here's my H, there's my cover, there's my stirrup, there's my number eight bar over two. That was what was assumed. And I found out I needed 4.42 inches squared. Now, if I go into figuring out how many bars I needed. I could get away with six number eight bars, five number nine bars, or four number 10 bars. I'm picking five number nines. Why? I don't want too few bars, and I'll show you why coming up, because we're gonna have a sweet trick that needs a pretty good number of bars to begin with for the largest sections. And I don't need too many bars, because I'm worried that it might not fit in my cross section. So we're gonna pick five number nines, that happens to be five inches squared. Now, this is very important. I have to find my actual D, my real D. 40 minus my cover, minus my stirrup, minus one half my number nine bar. Diameter is 37.4. I have to find my actual strength. This is very important. My actual strength that I'm providing, I figured out at 786 kip feet. This is greater than 671 kip feet. The world is a great place. Everything is awesome. I check out what my fee is. I assumed it was 0.9. I have to check that. And I figured out well, from all those calculations, my strain is 0.0165, which is greater than 0.005. The world is a great place. There's some more checks. I find out what my minimum area of steel is. I plug into these equations you've seen multiple times before, and I get 2.2 inches squared. This is the other equation. We plug in and we get 2.1 inches squared. There's no tricks here. There's nothing different. You should understand what this is already. To do this, I need to provide about two number nine bars. About two number nine bars gives me my AS min. Now I have to make sure my bars will fit in my cross section. So this is where I put in two times my cover plus two times my stirrup diameter, two times my bend radius, which is 
four stirrup diameters, previous video on that. And this how, is how I take care of my bar spacing and the number of the bars. Now, once I start plugging in here, I actually find out that I only need 15 inches to make this cross section work and I'm providing 18. The world is looking like a great place. So we move back to this equation we talked about previously in other videos. If you think back, if you actually solved exactly for how to find the area of steel in terms of all the other variables you would have, it would be a quadratic equation. And it would look something like this. Here is moment, here is area of steel. Here is a quadratic equation. And this 786 kip feet is what we provided. This is the capacity that we were able to provide. And I'm gonna do something very sweet. I'm going to assume this is the Jedi trick. Pay attention, Padwans, that this is a linear relationship from here to zero. I'm going to assume instead of a quadratic that I have a linear relationship between moment and area of steel. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. how can you do that? If it's conservative and fast, then I can do it and I should do it. What am I talking about here? If I have something that's like 500 kip feet, I would come across here. I would usually read off and I would have to do a bunch of work. I have to do all that work I showed you before. Oh my gosh, I'd have to do it all again. Yuck. If I did that though, I'd figure out the amount of steel that I needed. And by using my linear technique, I'm just gonna use a little bit more steel. It's gonna be fine. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We have found one point on this quadratic curve, but we're going to assume it's gonna vary linearly. And as long as we have designed for our highest moment, then we can design any other beam we want by using the ratio. Pay attention to this ratio. We're gonna focus over here. These are different locations, B, C, D, E, and F. Same locations I showed you before. I'm gonna pull the moments from B, C, D, E, and F. These are the design moments. This is the moment that I'm providing from section A. The moment that we are providing from section A, not the design moment, the providing moment. And this is the number of bars we ended up using, five bars. Now from this ratio, from the design moment, divided by what I'm providing, multiplied by the number of bars, I get how many bars I need at section B. And if I've chosen correctly, if I've designed for my highest moment, then every one of these bars will either be the same number or lower than what I did from my first calculation. For example, we needed 2.14 bars here, 4.1, 2.54, 3.5, and 1.6 bars. And here, we're gonna round up to three, five, three, four, and two. One check we always have to do is make sure our area steel minimum helps us and takes care of us for all these situations. And we needed two bars and we provided more than two bars or two bars in every one of these cases. This is powerful. This is huge. This is an amazing Jedi trick. I just solved for the amount of steel that I needed at every single location by using these simple ratios. Awesome. Now we know the number of bars. You might say, now how are we gonna lay these bars out? Well, there is a procedure to do that. ACI has all kinds of different rules that walks you through these different processes. And we are not gonna go through all of them because they're kind of complicated. I will give you a copy though in the notes of the video below. What we're gonna do is show you another super trick. This is a chart that was developed by one of my former teachers, Jedi Dr. Richard Klingner. He took all those rules and simplified it down and put it in one single chart. How this chart works is if I know my column to column spacing and my face to face spacing for my current bay and my adjacent bay, then I can immediately figure out where my steel goes. What am I talking about? I can tell you that for my positive moment, this dimension of this bar needs to be three quarters of L1 prime. And I can tell you my negative moment at the edge, it needs to be L1 prime over five. And at this dimension, it needs to be the greater of L1 prime over four or L1 prime two prime over four. Same thing over here. This will make a lot more sense once we do an example problem. It's coming up next. But now we also have this one way slab, same type of layouts. This is powerful. This is awesome. This 
is the way of the forest. What we're able to do is take that same structure that we've been working on, section A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now that we know how many bars go in each place, five bars here, two bars, five bars, three, four, and two, now we can also figure out how to lay them out. I'm gonna start out with a negative moments deal first. I got six feet here. How did I do that? Well, I looked at our this spacing here, which was 30 feet. I divided by five. 30 divided by five is six feet, and that is exactly how far that bar has to extend. Now I go to this dimension in the center here. This is the negative moment, section C. How far does it have to go? Well, I look here to here. They're both 30. I come down here and I calculate. 30 over four and that's seven and a half feet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna go in both dimensions. Seven and a half here, seven and a half here. I do the same thing over here with section E. I look in this dimension, it's 20 feet. I look in this dimension, it's 30 feet. I calculate both of them, 20 over four, 30 over four. Seven and a half feet are, are gonna control. These dimensions that extend are gonna be seven and a half feet in both directions. Now let's go back and do the positive moments deal. In this area, I only had two bars only had two bars because I have only had two bars. I don't have to put any more there. In this section, section D, I needed three bars. So I have my two bars that extended all the way down. I put an extra bar here. How long does that extra bar need to be? What's well, 22 and a half feet. How did we get that? Well, that's three quarters of 30 feet. Three quarters of that dimension tells us 22 and a half feet and that's where that bar has to go. And again, we only have two bars here and extends all the way to the end. Now you'll see I've dashed in these other lines. What are these things? Well, in these areas, theoretically, we don't need steel. We don't need it here, here, or here, theoretically. But when it comes to constructing, we need something to hang our stirrups on. We need something to make it easier to build this sucker. So because of that, we're gonna extend two bars, the two corner bars, the two bars that would be in the corner of our cross section, a bar here and a bar here. We're gonna extend at least those two bars, the entirety of the length of the beam. So this has at least two bars here, this has at least two bars here, and this has at least two bars here. We've also done another calculation down here at the bottom where we've figured out how, bar, how far that bar needs to be embedded into that column. <laughs> Woo! We did it, I told you. We can do hard problems. We just have to know and figure out the way through the maze and a few tricks. We can take things that are super complicated and make them easy. In summary, you have to design for your maximum moments. You need to use the ratio method for all other parts of your beams. Use that fast bar layout that I'm gonna give you in the notes of the video. It is amazing. And of course, subscribe to my channel Give me a thumbs up. Leave me your comments below about the Jedi sweet tricks I gave you today. And of course, remember, even when things look hard, even when you don't think you can make it, draw your lightsaber, get it out, get ready to go. Think about your training and then prepare. You can make this happen. And of course, use the force.